Good morning. It is a very frigid Saturday morning in the middle of January. Um, I am currently filming this as my first video downloads. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I did not know that it took that long to upload to YouTube. So here we go. Um, my name is Robin. I am currently in Coco Van. And uh, if you suffered through my first very awkward van tour video, kudos to you for making it through that because I have no idea what I'm doing yet. <laughs> hmm. um, if you are curious at all about my shenanigans with my 57 pound pit bull <laughs> by all means hit the like button subscribe even if i just get like a handful of subscribers even if there's only five of you that i end up with i will continue to upload um, some very informative videos i'm making this video in particular because in the first one i did drop the bomb that i am gutting my adorable abode and starting from scratch so I wanted to explain a little bit about that. First of all, you're going to see buildings around me. I am not parked anywhere fantastic today. Uh, the reason is because I am currently in my parents' driveway in Pennsylvania. And I'm here because I need to start prepping Coco for a major overhaul. So the reasoning, I'm going to scooch up off my bed so I can show you this. Um, the reasoning for this is I bought Coco in the beginning of September of 2021. It was a spontaneous purchase. I originally had a Toyota Highlander, Blue Betsy, I love you. Live long and prosper. I say that because I know she went to auction and I feel awful about it. I had Blue Betsy for years and uh, we put almost 80,000 miles on tons of traveling. I mean, she got me to Florida. Um, we went to Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, Ohio. I mean, I just, she was built out. It was, it was a, um, what do they call them? The no build car V type setup. So she had a bed and she had shelves and, and she had a, um, wash basin, all, all that good stuff and tons of camping gear but she was she was she was getting there in miles she was already over 200,000 and I really wanted something that was going to be sustainable so I had been planning on a van for three years and uh, I just happened to find Coco um, Blue Betsy was in the shop she was getting ready to be prepped for passing inspection. She had a lot of work that needed to be done. And at that time, I just decided, you know, dropping over $500 to get her set to pass inspection when I knew she was at almost 220,000 miles, uh, original engine, original transmission, all that good stuff. I, it just, it didn't set right. So I found Coco on the fly. I was actually prepping for a long trip. And the day before I bought Coco, I might upload the, the little clip from when I bought her. I look like a total goob, uh, but I was so excited. I was just, I was giddy. So she's a minivan, uh, Dodge Caravan 2016 in pristine condition. I mean, she was mint. She had been kept in a garage, only one previous owner. She had only 60,000 miles on her. I just, I couldn't pass up the deal. It was just, it was a no-brainer. My mechanic flat out said, if you do not buy her, I'm buying her. So I have Coco now. So I started the build in September when the weather was nice. And I followed the typical floor plan that I've seen for minivans. I mean, there's not a lot of options with minivans. And unfortunately... We're now into the middle of January. We're hitting single digits out here. I am a static van dweller um, because, you know, I have family up here. 
that I need to be around for a couple years. And I also have a full-time business that I run. Um, and until I hire staff to, to kind of take over the day-to-day, -day, I'm here. I'm stationary. And then I just take trips because I plan my own schedule. It's the beauty of owning your own business. You do what you want. So once a month, I take a really long extended uh, weekend and I just I drive somewhere. And me and the dog, we just we camp out. We boondock. And sometimes we get camping sites and, and it's just, it's bliss. It's total bliss. Um, but unfortunately, I, I've been here because I've been doing some temperature checks for overnights. Uh, we were in it for two weeks. And in those two weeks, um, the temperatures started dropping really, really low. And I've kept her at a safe 28 degrees overnight while sleeping. I'm comfortable with that because of everything else that's going on with the bedding and, and all that jazz that to me is comfortable i'm just i'm weird like that 28 degrees to me isn't bad but the outside was not in single digits so that has me a little bit nervous so far my nerves have not been calmed by the things i'm discovering about coco's setup so, for example, um, the Dodge Caravans, they have a lot of undercarriage below the floor, like the stow-and-go seating. You rip them out, and you've got storage for days. And I love it. But I, I lifted up my rug so that you can see this. So, this is one of the compartments. The other one I modified because I have my kitchen set up. And it is drilled to a floor that I built after ripping out the other door. And then I created this little hatch. And that's actually my pantry over there. All of like my spices, other than these three, obviously. <laughs> but my spices, my dry stock, canned goods, all that stuff, that's all in here. And then I've got this. You can see my breath now which you couldn't a minute ago, because this is like roasty toasty. I've got it to like 55 degrees in here. I'm comfy. Um, that's with my buddy heater running. But this, so I put my temperature gauge down here. Last time I checked, it was at 22 degrees. Let's see what it is now. It's down to 20. So as you can see, there is a lot of cold down here. This is a freezer. I've got clothing stored down here. I have the cords for charging my Jackery um, and the, my mini vacuum, all kinds of cords down here. And then back there is my, my bougie little spa station. Yeah, I'm, I'm a woodsy girl, but I'm also a girly girl, woodsy girl. I can rough it, but I like to occasionally have a nice, like, pedicure day. <sighs> I can't, I can't, I, I can't get away from that. I have to do that. So this is freezing. I know the one in the back, it's probably even colder than that. And I do have a problem with the draft underneath my bed coming from back there. So you're limited on the floor options, like the floor plans for these fans. And I spent months when I was considering doing a minivan, when I decided to downgrade just for um, the ability of stealth and, and maintenance, all that stuff. When, when I went with the minivan idea, I mean, I researched and I researched and I researched. I, I've been planning this since like 2019. I have done my research and there are so many limited options that I've seen that people have actually posted. Um, there was one picture that I came across a couple days ago where somebody did a van build in a Dodge Caravan and they utilized the stow and go space as floor space. And I thought, you know, because I have a I have a toilet set up. Everybody wants to know, how do you pee? How do you go poo? Like, what do, what do you do? I have a toilet. But right now, if I was to have the dog in here and I had the toilet in here, it would feel very very cramped and i'm not about that i want space i want her to be able to move around i want me to be able to move around i don't want every inch of the floor covered with stuff i can't put the toilet in here 
and I want the toilet in here. So between the insulation problem and the floor plan issue and the fact that if you watched my first video I shared that in the winter time I'm a little lazy when it comes to my bed I don't want to turn it into a couch I don't want to have to go outside when it is seven degrees out and pop the hatch and let winter inside cocoa and waste all the propane that I just spent heating her I don't want to do that to put it into a couch form for a couple hours I don't I don't want to so I saw a floor plan where they had the bed set up behind the driver's side long ways and it extended out towards the passenger side to make it bigger but when it was you know pushed together it was a couch and in the back they had a bathroom and they had the kitchen set up using the rear wells and I'm like that's genius I love it love it and there is another um, vlogger that I have been obsessed with. I've got a couple of them, but there's one. This dude, if you watch Van Life YouTube, you know who I'm talking about. I don't remember his name, but he's like the really cool uncle that everybody wants. Like Father Christmas uncle. And he runs Cheap RV Living. And he's been talking about this company out in California that puts high tops on minivans. Excuse me? Did somebody say high top on a Dodge Caravan? I'm all about this. So I contacted the company and I really, really want to go down there and well, down there, across, cross country. I really, really want to drive for three days. I want to, I want to do it. And I want to get a high top on here. And so my plan is to try to do that sometime after spring, like late spring, early summer. And in order for that to work the way I want it, I need to change the floor plan as well. So those rear wells, if I stand in the rear well, I've got like an extra 10 inches of clearance from the ceiling and they can put a 12 inch topper on. So my thinking is, I'm only 5'6", if I change the floor plan and I set up the bathroom back there and I set up the kitchen back there and then I get the high topper, I would actually be able to stand while cooking in cocoa. <sighs> like my, my mind is blown. I will drop the money to do it. I will do it in a freaking heartbeat. And the reason is because, I mean, she's in such excellent condition. She was really well taken care of. I plan on continuing with that. I'm going to spoil her rotten. She's my baby. Other, other than my actual babies and, and the fur baby. She is. She's part of the family. I want to keep her for several years. And I'm not going to upgrade to an RV or a high top or a box truck. I'm not doing that for close to 10 years. So she needs to be comfortable. She needs to be livable. She needs to function. And she needs to be good year round. So I need to make some changes. So... That's why this video is here to explain why I'm gutting her. She is beautiful. She is quirky. She is 100% me. But she is me with the ADHD brain. And I need to fix that. So I don't have any videos of the initial build. But I am going to record dismantling her. And I'm going to record the things that I am doing to prep her for having this gone and extended so if you want to if you want to travel along on that journey because I got my work cut out for me I mean you figure I'm running I'm running a business by the time I'm done it's dark because we're you know winter solstice you know the the daylight savings time so by the time I'm done I can't work on the van because it is pitch black dark outside so a lot of this is going to be weekend work and days off um, and just doing like small things here and there so I can start insulating and I can start building the interior boxes because I'm, I'm going to make it function up front where it's no longer a freezer I'm, I'm gonna try uh, because you know warm air rises 
So I've got all this heat up here, but then my feet are frozen. Like I can't, I'm even wearing my winter boots and I've got the buddy heater facing me. I can't feel my toes. My toes are important to me. So I'm going to start working on that this weekend and I will be uploading those videos later, step by step as I go through this. Because this particular type of build, nobody else. I can't find it. If you know, leave in the comments, if you know somebody that did one of these wild, crazy builds in a minivan where they utilize the rear well as floor space, put it in the comments. Tell me where they're at. Show me. Guide me. I, I want to know. In the meantime, I'm going to be recording me doing it so that it's out there because I'm telling you, planning this out, knowing how many options there are is really helpful and really beneficial. If I had known this was possible in September, I would have started building her out that way in September. Also, I am going to be having some fun with the trim. Most people do their builds with the trim still intact. There are a couple guys out there. Their builds are fantastic and they remove the trim and it looks like a heck of a lot of work, but it's worth it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to remove my heater core or not. That seems scary to me. So maybe I'll only remove one trim panel. My heater core is on this side. So maybe that's the side that I'm going to rip out. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me. This is all just kind of like, as I go through it, changes will be made because that's, that's just, it's how I operate. <laughs> I think things through and I overanalyze. And then when it comes right down to it, a new idea pops in and that's what I roll with. So there's the explanation of why and what's coming. And um, I'll see you then. Mwah. Have a great day.